You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. This is episode 125 of the Wisdom by Wessa show on the Horse Radio Network. This is Mike Donnell. I'm Casey Wilbanks Coletti. And this is Sophia Yagela. Welcome to Wisdom by Wessa on the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. This podcast is brought to you by the Western and English Sales Association, WESA, which provides the world's largest trade events for retailers, manufacturers, and sales representatives of the equestrian industry. In this podcast, we feature exclusive interviews with noteworthy Western and English personalities, retailers, and exhibitors who you've always wanted to talk to. Don't miss out on all the news for manufacturers and retailers in the equine industry. From walking around the show floor at recent WESA trade shows, what's an on-site trend that you have noticed, Sophia? Well, from our end of things, it seems like buyers are really loving the brand activations. So those, of course, are just any interactive experiences that brands set up on-site at the WESA trade show to show off certain parts of their products. And of course, they've been around for a while. There aren't all that new, but in general at the Wessa Trade Show, we do see a lot more of them happening on site. So that is a new trend. Speaking of activations, I remember hearing about Wessa planning another interactive party for the buyers. How did you all come up with that idea? And are we going to see more of those in the future? Yes, so those parties have been a hit lately, and we do love planning them. It all started with inviting JT Rockwell. He was on the podcast before as well to do a live painting on site. And then that turned into a fun two-hour event with themed and colorful food and drink options. And the feedback was so great that at the last show, we actually hosted another interactive party. It was our live cigar rolling. So we invited a local cigar roller and then paired that event with some bacon and bourbon treats. And again, the feedback was great. So we're definitely working on adding more interactive events. I think the buyers just really love to learn something new, even if it's like a cigar rolling and not really anything related to a certain product category. Um, And of course, it also gives them a chance to network. So we do want to make sure to actually cater to that interest. I miss the cigar rolling. (laughs) I I would have loved to have been. I don't smoke cigars, but I really like the smell when somebody does smoke cigars. Yes, Um, it was really interesting and really fun to see. So that was a fun event, too. So cool. Building on the success of those fun interactive parties, what are your plans for similar experiences at upcoming WESA trade shows to keep the crowd engaged? Well, so we're thinking of bringing in even more artists to show off their skills and teach attendees something unique. And we are encouraging to have the exhibitors get in on the action too. And one thing, for example, that comes to mind after our last interview is a custom hat bar, for example, but we're not just trying to stick to apparel and accessories. We're right now really brainstorming on ways to include all sorts of cool stuff for all of the WESA categories and expand into those. So yes, working on ideas right now for future events. And of course, we're always open to suggestions. Dr. Mike Freeman, a doctor of chiropractic medicine and kinesiology, Traveled the country working on horses with sore backs, nerve damage, muscle atrophy, conditions which he attributed in part to the saddle pads that provided very poor foundation for the saddle and improper heat and pressure dissipation. Freeman began developing a new saddle pad, new materials and designs, which were tested by veterinarians and at Texas A&M University. The result was the saddle right orthopedic saddle pad introduced in 1979 and still widely used today. The company sales manager, Yvonne South, joins us today. Who's going to tell us stories about Casey? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yvonne South, thank you so much for joining us on the Wisdom by Wessa podcast. Thank you for having me. 
I know that our listeners are interested in both the, the unique story and background as how Satellite came to be. I'd like you to t- touch on that a little bit. We want to hear great stories about Casey when she was a little girl. And then we want to talk about how people and retailers sell your pads, stock your pads, and what's coming up new. Great. Great. So let's go back to Dr. Freeman when he first began to think of this idea. Well, Dr. Freeman, it was back in 1979. He was traveling around the country and treating horses, and he kept seeing the same kinds of problems over and over again with back sorenesses and lower leg uh, lamenesses that were being caused actually from the back area. And he knew that it, it stemmed from the saddle and the, and the pad, and he was determined to find uh, a pad that would help that horse uh, to be able to support the load that we put on them and do the job that we've asked them to do. So he and two of his friends, which were veterinarians, went to work on trying to find the right core material to put inside the pad that would resist pressure, resist heat, uh, would, and would not break down. And it took them three years to come up with the prototype to, when they were finally happy with it. And they sent it to Texas A&M University to have it tested to make sure it would do all the things they wanted it to do. And then through time, uh, it was a very short amount of time, they kind of tweaked the design of the pad and came up with the pad that we know today. So our pad right now in its design is the same pad that was released to the public back in 1984. That's a great story. Well, A, he had the dedication to find a solution to what he knew was a real problem. And there's nothing better than a product that actually solves a problem, regardless of what the product or the issue is. And he's come up with that. Then how did the business itself get uh, built and put together? Well, Jeanette was his wife and uh, she and Mike uh, would travel around when they, after they started producing some of the pads, they started traveling around and they sold him out of the back of their Cadillac as he would go around and treat people's horses. So that was the first connection to the public with the product. In the early days of the product, they had such notables as Al Dunning, who rode the pads, Clay O'Brien Cooper rode the pads, uh, Sherry Servey rode the pads. There, you know, there was a host of great people riding him who really loved them and really saw great benefits from them, and still to this day would tell you the same thing about them. And so uh, they finally finally lit in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, which is where they opened their shop. And the shop is still in Las Vegas, Nevada. And the same guys that are working in there now, there's just three of them and the one gentleman's wife, have been there for 30 years. So it's still a very tiny business. It was a mom and pop business, and they put their heart and soul into everything about this product. And And their goal was basically to reach out and try and assist every horse to, read its, to reach its full potential. And I saw on the, I'm going to have Casey jump in here as well, but I saw there now there's a variety of pads for different types of equestrian activities. Um, yeah. I know there's a picture on the website, which is obviously at a thoroughbred track, but now you have, uh, you know, those for the Western market, which you said I think was your stronger market. And um, Casey, I want you to jump in here because you, you use pads and I don't really use them and talk about it. Plus, uh, you know, I'm, maybe Yvonne has a story or two. I don't know. <laughs> That's always a blast from the past. Um, when he mentioned we would be talking to you, I'm like, oh my gosh, yes. Uh, I forget how old I've gotten now at this point, but it's good well, to talk to well, you, Yvonne. <laughs> kind of, kind of stick on. Yes, it has. It has been quite some time, and 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 I do. You were just a, a wonderful little girl that we remembered so much from the junior rodeos and stuff, and you were not a troublemaker or anything like that. So you didn't do anything remarkable. But no. I do I do have the funniest story about your grandfather. Oh, of course. And, Everybody of has course. one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and I had my chickens for sale and he responded to the ad for my chickens for sale and he drove to Penrose, Colorado, which is where we were living, 
and we bartered about our chickens. And I said, well, um, he, he told me he would give me $10 a piece for them. And I thought, well, that was sounded cheap to me. I said, well, they're young chickens and they're laying. And he said, yes, but they don't have any feathers. <laughs> and I said, well, I didn't really know what to do about that. That'd been a problem. So I told him when I put on the receipt to him that I had sold him my naked chicken. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he was a character and he loved a good bargain. Um, he was a wonderful, wonderful guy. And uh, he's sorely missed by the community, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. He, and your he mom was and dad big... are great people. Yes. We, it's we it's a them. long history. I told Mike before we got on here, I didn't say anything. It's it's kind of funny. I am host, co-hosting a podcast because when I was a little girl, I don't think I spoke. So, no, uh -uh. Um, here we are a long way and no, I was never in trouble. That was later years. Well, actually never, <laughs> but nonetheless, it's great to have you. And the cool thing um, when, you know, talking to somebody like you that is representing a product, you don't, you don't just have the research and the knowledge on it. You also hands on, you have rode yes. horses your whole life. You're able to use these pads as well. So talking from your perspective and so people can relate to you. What do you right. personally love about these pads? Oh, there's so many things I love about them. Um, I think my favorite thing about them is they're close to, uh, close contact fit. So there's no bulk. When you when you put our pad on and you're using the standard pad, you're only at five eighths of an inch. So you're you're just minimally over a half an inch, which gives gives you a really nice close contact but yet you can bank on the fact that you've got superior protection in that small amount. Um, that'd be one of the things I like the best. Uh, secondly would be the fact that they never change. They have a lifetime warranty against core compression. And so this pad will never change and has not had a failed core in one ever since they came out. There has never been one compress and break down. And so I look at it kind of from a viewpoint of, uh, we, we, you know, we grew up in a feed and tax store and every pad or product that came across the board, we had it in our store and then I drug it home and I rode it. And if it didn't really stand out, we didn't handle it. And I think of all the pads that I rode for a year and had to throw away because they were broke down or are disintegrated and didn't wear well. And uh, now I've got pads that are, you know, 20 years old that uh, I'm still using. Wow. They're, they're still the same great product because they don't change. And I've had the most incredible times where I've been able to see other people with horse problems, you know, with a horse issue. And the pad has just turned that situation around for them. Uh, unbelievable. Taken that horses an, that vets were concerned about because they were not able to function sure. um, and step, and turn it around and take them right back to the winner's circle. That was what I was going to touch on next, just to educate potential maybe dealers or maybe even people listening that would be interested in buying one. But back problems in a horse or sore back can present yeah. in so many different other ways. And it... You, it's sometimes hard to recognize that it's actually coming from the back, behavioral problems or not working or even present lameness somewhere else. So maybe touch on just a few of those things. Well, one, some of the designs of the pad address some of the situations like you're, you're referring to. Horses that are not performing well, uh, don't want to go in the arena, want to resist against everything, generally are horses that are suffering from pain somewhere. And I know as the years have changed, it used to be uh, that we had the additive, we'll just go make them do it. Well, now right. we've yeah. figured out that that's, that was the wrong, that was the yeah. wrong approach that we need to stop and figure out why it is that they exactly. don't want to do it and then give them the opportunity by change to go out and do the job we ask them to do. And I, I often tell people that um, 
in my in my Bible reading, I've never found in there where God said, "Here, man, here's a horse. Go run it around three cans." I mean, <laughs> yeah, so I exactly. <laughs> we're yeah. asking these horses to do some things right. that we we sure. don't that you know maybe they weren't really intended to do. Sure. And so it's it's up to us to make sure we give them the right protection and the right tools to get it done. And well, so in the yeah. design of the pad, part of uh, what Dr. Freeman found was that most of the lameness is stem coming from the wither area. Most of the problems start right there, which is like the central system where everything ties in. And um, by making the changes to a thinner pad, open that area up and the design being open in the front to allow for the cranial nerve and all that that ties in there to have better range of motion. And that changed a lot of, a lot of the way a horse could move uh, in the front end by taking that pressure off that area. There's something else I would like to mention. And I think sometimes when we get that great horse or we're competing, um, that's when we, or we do run into a problem, then that's when we start looking to options like this. But where I see this, the most beneficial is starting out with the right mm-hmm. things. When you're starting colts, whether they're on the track, whether they're in running barrels or what, whatever discipline they're doing, starting them out yes. so they never learn to hate what they're doing and associate Absolutely. the pain with it. And, and from there, when they have that good start, they, they're they able to continue growing instead of just kind of making them hate it, for a lack of better words, from the get-go. Well, that is that is so true because in a lot of situations, I I sort of liken it to – uh, a kid going to school, if you if you make that interesting and you make something there exciting and you give them the tools to do the job and then get out of their way and let them go do the job. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a, a strong factor in producing horses that like what they do and want to go do it and uh, will do it consistently. And but, last. But, lo- yeah. Have and a last longer a long, longevity. Mm-hmm. Yes. Last for a long period of time. And so but, uh, you know, it's taken a while for um, for us to kind of wrap our minds around some of these these ideas where Mike was really early on in knowing that the pad, of course, you have to start with a good fitting saddle. But the pad was a, was a strong key to making that back stay sound. Yes, of and course. And so he, he was way ahead. Well, and let's talk about some of the people that use these products because um, you're able to talk about them from a hands-on experience. There's also tried and true trusted people in the industry that are using them. One being Jolie Lauderette Jordan, um, well-respected. Yeah. And um, when you put somebody like that using the product, they're using it because it works and they trust in it. Exactly. Jolie has been, uh, she and her mom had been on the pad since they came out. Dr. Freeman used to work on their horses. And so some of the very first pads that were ever released for trial went to Jolie Lauderette as well as Betsy LaMare. Betsy and Jeff LaMare, or Bonnie, Betsy's mom and Jeff. Uh And uh, so they were some of the first people to get to ride the prototypes and see how, you know, see how they were going to function. And during this time frame, they, they tweaked a few things. Uh, the pad used to have more of a flat back on it. It still had a space in between the two sides, but it was still flat back that allowed for some spinal relief. Since then, we've chosen to use a seam that runs down the middle of the spine. And our core material runs up to what's called a support bar in there. And it allows for lift of that pad, lift of your saddle, and it allows a natural air channel, plus it's off the spine. So when you're done riding with this pad, you'll have a dry spine. They open the front up, uh, and so it is totally open, and it's skived down. So there's no pressure, not just from the top, but there's no pressure from the sides as well. As it moves to the lower back region, they brought that forward and opened that up. So you don't get resistance and a binding process through the lower lumbar region. So through the through the time from the original design, which was very square looking, uh, Mike went in there and saw the need to to tweak it and bring it full circle with the help of those people that rode it. Like like you know, Jolene knows this pad inside and out, and she's still riding some of the pads that she's had since she got them from Mike. Wow. 
That's incredible. So there's knowledge coming from a man who's working on the horses and and somebody that is actually using the pads. So yeah. I think that knowledge should you know speak for itself. I mean, it is obvious to me why you are the sales manager. I mean, oh, what well, a great you. <laughs> you know everything about the product, the history, the whatever, but that word sales still stands out. This is not a company that has a hobby of turning out a few saddle pads. They're in the business of making them and selling them. And if yes. I am a retailer in Montana or Arizona or New York, for that matter, or I'm training horses, uh, what is the, how are you now going to market? How does a retailer become a dealer for saddle right? And also, what is the online sales picture for the business? Okay, well, we've got dealers uh, across the United States, which we are still hoping to grow. So we're, you know, we're still looking for uh, an active dealer base. We also have four dealers in Canada. And um, we, it's, it, it's very easy to get a dealership with us. They just need to contact me and we send them a, 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 a package, a dealer package to fill out. And it's, it's very minimal. We don't have a huge buy-in. We do request that they make an attempt to at least sell 24 in a year, um, which is so simple. It's very, very simple. But we don't want to set their, their hopes too high, you know, and, uh, and then we want them to be tickled when it's much better than that. Um, we usually try to pick places where we put them in that have a knowledgeable base. Um, this is a pad that you can go into Teskies and buy. And uh, some of the people in there working in that area are very familiar with the product and would know which design and what size to put you into. Uh, cool Horse is another dealer for us. We've got um, from South from South Carolina to, to California, um, a huge base of that. Uh, we have a lot of re of uh, tech trailer type sales as well. That people that go to events and set up that don't have a bricks and mortar store. Um, those I think are really great outlets as well, because they are right there on site where you can see it, touch it, feel it, and even have the opportunity to put it on and go take a test ride. So those are very important dealers as well. Uh, we do sell online on our website, and we are just now transferring uh, the site so that you can, as a consumer, purchase on there now, as well as our dealers can go on and do their orders. Or they are more than welcome to call me, and I'll help them walk through an order, and we'll determine exactly what it is your horse needs. I think we're probably one of the last businesses that actually does that that if you have something special going on with your horse, you can call and we'll discuss your saddle and we'll discuss what's going on with your horse and we will find you the perfect product. Well, I think that's a, a phenomenal package of benefits. Is there not a new design, a new pad coming out? Yes, we just launched a new design. Up until uh, eight years ago, almost nine years ago, Dr. Freeman passed away and sold the company to uh, Omega Fields. And Jeanette stayed on as their general manager. And sadly, we lost her a year and a half ago at the age of, uh, I think she was 72 or 73. And to that time, all of the pads had stayed the same. The thicknesses were the same. Uh, as far as like you know, we were talking about Jolie Lauderette, she would have roped in our standard pad. Clay O'Brien roped in the standard pad. Uh, about seven years ago, when I was asked to uh, come to work for them, we designed the first pad, which was the Legacy. That was our first upgraded pad. And we took the same wonderful design and we added one eighth inch more core material right along the support bar. And the purpose in doing that at that time was because I had a handmade saddle that fit this horse great and I sold that horse. And of course, everybody goes through that. And then it didn't really fit my next one, but I didn't want to have to... Re replace the saddle that one eighth inch core that we put along that bar did fantastic for taking up the slack that was in the front of my barrel saddle when i'd make a turn in a run it would just tip my saddle out over the shoulder by putting that one eighth of piece in there that runs the whole length of the pad not only did it take up that slack that was in there but it rebalanced my saddle so i didn't have one that was lifted in the front and 
set down in the back where I got, you know, an abnormal pressure range. And those have been extremely popular. And now this year we came out with the new Phoenix and we launched it uh, in Las Vegas uh, in December. And it is our new ultimate roping pad. And it's the same pad as what the company started with. We haven't changed anything there. It has the legacy upgrade, which was our second design we came out with. And this, this one has an additional one eighth of lining put into it. So it makes it a quarter inch lining. This pad's still going to come in at under an inch. Um, Dr. Freeman was really, was really hard in his belief that you did not need thick underneath your saddle. Thick was a problem. Thick was not good. Thick was bad. And, um, and he would always uh, discourage people from using lots of thick, cushy types of pads because they break down. They don't stay the same. And they do not offer support, not like his design did. And so we've always stayed away from having thick pads. But we came out with this one. This will be the thickest one we will ever make. We will never make one thicker than this one. And we added just that little bit for our team ropers where you get a little bit more sweat absorption with it. It's great for our day workers. Um, We sent some of the test pads up to uh, Wyoming for the forestry department to ride. And they came back with absolutely, you know, raging reviews on it and stuff. So those are the designs that we've come up with. Of course, we make all of them handmade. They're they're all made handmade in the shop in Las Vegas. And they're made specifically for each customer. And so if you have a particular color combination that you use at your barn or your favorite colors, we can do one in those colors. We can do all sorts of things. If you need one that's a little longer or a little shorter, we can do it. So uh, we've also, by coming up with that legacy design, came up with a great pad for horses with kissing spine. And we're getting lots of referrals from veterinarians because our pad will lift up off that spine and protect that area and give you better clearance than than those pads that are belted together with a piece of webbing. Well, I think, again, you're <clears throat> coming up with new variations on a theme. I Maybe this is something that Casey wants to start thinking about. There was a gal who rode your saddle in the 100-mile, 24-hour horse race in the California. Cup. I yes, think that Tevis will be Cup. something great for Casey, but talk a bit about that so Casey can start to get ready. How do I get oh, roped into all, all all these things I'm, on this show? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I you know of all the things that I've thought about, you could do with your pad, you know, and how hard the use would be on it to do. And you know, we've had some big ranches that are riding our pads, and those guys are spending 14 hours in the saddle, and you're going, oh wow, you know, that's great. Well, this woman beat that, and her name is Juleen Fiesel, and she's from uh, actually Cedar Edge, Colorado. And her goal, her bucket list goal was to ride in the Tevis Cup 100 miles in 24 hours, which that alone sounds crazy, but it's where it was at that makes it even wilder. And it, she went across the Sierra Nevada mountain range. And Casey, this is did, for you. <laughs> oh, she, Mike. She Mike, did this. Mike, she, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> she's 70 years old. So 70 years old, and she takes us on. This is something she always wanted to do. So she had her horse, Khaleesi, which is a horse that she has raised and and broke herself. They enter the race. There are 90 people, I believe 94, that started the race. And she decided, her pit crew decided she should ride saddle ride. And so they paired it up with her particular saddle, which was a specialized saddle. And away she went. And, of course, she went with her friend. They were just kind of really doing this, the two of them together. And they were kind of in the back of the pack. And the friend's horse uh, didn't didn't make it, you know, all the way through the race before he was pulled. And so now it was up to uh, Julene to go on. And so they rode the, the one pad, the first leg of it. And as they moved into the night, they put, they stopped and they put the fresh pad on him. So he'd have a dry pad to go into the evening with. So he finished it on, on our two pads. What was really remarkable, not that that isn't superb, but that his uh, checkpoints were all absolutely A's. 
he had done amazing all the way through there. And at the end, the vet commented that this horse does not look like he's been a hundred miles. He has no back soreness, no rubbing, no muscle fatigue, absolutely incredible. And so we were quite, quite pleased at, this was someone who, who had not used the pads and, and took that chance on it. And wow, we couldn't have been happier for our pad or for her that she, she did end up, I think it's, it was in the top 50. So she ended up in the upper part of it. I believe Sharon said 16th, but I, I'm not positive. So what an incredible showing from this horse and, uh, and this gal, which has, a, oh my gosh, the tenacity. I mean, I don't want to walk to the barn in the dark. I sure don't. Well, <laughs> Casey likes to ride horses, and I think there's a bright future for her, uh, even while she runs barrels, to go yes. to this race in the next few years. Casey, oh, my. Uh, we're going to no. talk. We're going to put this together for you. I'm just thinking this is a shopping. good. I think this is a good deal. I'll send you the picture from her. The picture alone is enough to scare you. This oh, horse God. is going up a rock ledge. It is a rock ledge, and she's he's just cruising right up there. It is absolutely amazing. So we were so excited to get to be a part of that, you know, and uh, and that we we had a little part in in helping keep her horse sound throughout throughout this great experience. Well, it's you and you and a, Casey can go together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After I saw the pictures, there is no way. Not a chance. <laughs> anyway, no way. Is, we can talk about we could do we can tell stories and talk about this all afternoon. That's the fun thing about doing this show. And I know Casey agrees, is we get a chance to to not only learn about products and how they apply and how they're sold, but there's always backstories, there's always interesting people, and this makes the show fun to listen to, but it also right. makes it informative. And you've done a great job of both. And we thank you for spending the time with Casey and I on the Wisdom of My Wessa podcast. Thanks a lot. Wonderful. I appreciate you uh, inviting me to be here. The show notes and the links from today's show can be found at wisdombywessa.com. And We'd love to hear any feedback you might have. There's a contact link on that site. The Wisdom by Wessa show will be published on the 15th and 30th of every month. You can listen on most of your favorite podcast players, and you can also listen on wisdombywessa.com. Be sure to visit all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Wessa, where the industry meets.